My name is Dennis Cochran, and uh, um, I'm going to tell you just briefly how the Lord directed me into a Bible translation ministry. As a college student, I came to an awareness that God wanted me in missions, but I really didn't know exactly what area of missionary service I should be involved in. But I had a summer experience in Mexico and I was staying with Bible translators. Now at that point I didn't think I would be interested in translation work. I thought it would, might be kind of dull just sitting at a desk a lot. But oh my, by the end of that summer they had given me the privilege of sitting at those desks helping to uh, cause the, the, the people to understand a particular text, what it meant and how it could be translated into their language. I tell you, by the end of the summer, I was hopelessly hooked. I knew that this is, this is what really excites me, and I knew that's what I had to do with my life. Well, then it became a question of where in the world does God want me to go to do Bible translation work? And at some point, somebody gave me a little tract on New Guinea. Well, I didn't know where New Guinea was. I thought maybe it was in Africa somewhere, or maybe in Latin America. You know, there's the Guianas in Latin America, and there are Guineas in Africa. But no, New Guinea, that's a huge island just north of Australia. Well, I read this little tract and, and I found out there were hundreds, hundreds, many hundreds of language groups in that nation in which the people had no idea what the gospel was about. And all I can say is the Holy Spirit just touched my heart as I read that little tract. And I sensed this is where God wants me to invest my life. Well, I hoped that I'd be able to take a wife with me. So this young lady that I was dating, I very quickly wanted her to know that I was headed for New Guinea. Now the reason I wanted her to know that early in our relationship was, I'm a bit of a cheapskate and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on this girl if she wasn't willing to go to New Guinea with me. So, but yes, she was willing to go to New Guinea, and that's where we went with our two young children. We actually went, uh, I was age 27, my wife was 24, and we had two very young children, one age two, and the other just uh, three months, uh, four, five months old. So, um, yeah, that's, that's when we went to New Guinea, and then God just, uh, there were quite a number of tribal groups that we could have gone to, we prayed about uh, a number of them, and somehow God just uh, put a special burden on our hearts for the Duna people, a tribe of about 20,000, living way back in the interior mountains, completely inaccessible by the rest of the world. Only way to get there was to go in and build a little dirt runway, and uh, then that's how we got in and out. It was just by little single-engine airplanes. And God had a, gave us just the thrill of learning their language, which was unwritten, they had no alphabet, but we'd been trained in linguistics, we knew how to analyze their sound, the sounds in their language, and give them an alphabet that was just right, and, and then we taught many people, we created primers and readers, taught many people to read and write their own language, and then we had the huge joy of giving God's Word to these people for the first time in history. These are people that never heard that God had a son, never heard that God had a book, and oh my, the Word of God proved to be so powerful in transforming their lives. Transforming not just individual lives, but some of the very fabric of their culture. Things like, like wife beating. That just was dramatically changed when people came to put their trust in Christ and commit themselves to Him. So what a, what a joy to see God's Word produce such profound transformation in a society of people that have never even knew that God had a son or a book. So I recommend this ministry to anybody uh, who has a longing to give God's Word to people that have never had it.